how um, or have you guys thought about it, the Khan Academy kind of linking to a more traditional or legitimate medical education and how the videos kind of interact with kind of more traditional forms for education? Yeah, that actually was going to be my example. So I'm working with Stanford Medical School around using Khan Academy videos in their classrooms. And so Stanford Medical School is a pretty traditional medical school. And actually, we're doing this a little bit with UCSF as well. And these are fairly traditional medical schools. And they, um, they are starting to use Khan Academy style videos in their classrooms and having amazing success. So they have, and this is not uncommon, about 20% of medical students attend classes. It's shockingly low. And the reason that they have such low attendance is that the value for those minutes spent in that lecture is pretty low. And so people kind of wisen up quickly and say, I'm not going to wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock or even 2 o'clock and go to class <laughs> because it has no value. I can just sit at home and watch the video if I want to. Uh, and I can get it much quicker. It's more efficient. It's faster. I do great on the exams. Why would I go? And so this is increasingly seen I mean, everywhere uh, that I go. I hear this from med schools. And so we're trying to use them and see if it helps. And uh, in one classroom, they actually published a study that showed that attendance went from like 20, let's say 25%, I'm being generous, to close to 90%. And this was a biochemistry class. And in that class, they had rave reviews about how it was after the videos. Because basically, they're watching the videos at home. They're coming in, and they're sitting in groups. They're talking for the first time. And they're actually solving problems. You know, this is, this is what you're supposed to go to med school for, is to think. And it's incredible that people can actually be brain dead for an hour, walk out, and they haven't really thought much because they're just kind of falling asleep or they're, they're on Facebook or they're doing whatever, and they're not actually paying attention, and they don't need to. But now if you actually have that hour where you're actually saying, okay, look, you have a case of a child who comes in with a low blood sugar, um, what do you think could be the problem? What, what enzyme do you think could be the problem? And they have to actually think through it and say, okay, well, I saw the videos, so I can't say I don't know. And now I've got to actually just figure it out. My peers are going to help figure it out with me. So we're trying to do stuff with, um, with med schools around introducing this style. And I think it's working really well. And, and are we walking with some agenda? No. I mean, I will flatly say I have no idea if this is going to work in the long term or not. And if, you know, if it's the best idea or not. I have a gut feeling that I think it's the right track. And I think it's a good thing to try. And we're going to probably learn as we go along that we've got to tweak this or tweak that to make it better and better. But, um, but it's worth a try. And we're actually learning from a lot of schools as we go along. You know, I showed the robotic stuff and the stock market stuff. These are things that teachers have come up with. And more and more classrooms are coming up with kind of fun activities to do in the class. You know, having a debate is a great way to teach. You know, have a debate and divide the class up and say, you guys have to be on the anti-vaccine side and you have to be on the pro-vaccine side and go at it. And you have to really understand the literature to be able to kind of have a real meaningful debate about that. And so having things like that that are interactive are so much more meaningful, I think, than, than traditional kind of quiet lecture halls mm -hmm. where one person's speaking. 